Genesis chapter 26. A severe famine now struck the land as had happened before in Abraham's time. So Isaac moved to Gerar where Abimelech, king of the Philistines, lived. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt, but do as I tell you. Live here as a foreigner in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. I hereby confirm that I will give all these lands to you and your descendants, just as I solemnly promised Abraham, your father. I will cause your descendants to become as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give them all these lands. And through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. I will do this because Abraham listened to me and obeyed all my requirements, commands, decrees, and instructions. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men who lived there asked Isaac about his wife, Rebekah, he said, She is my sister. He was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought they will kill me to get her because she is so beautiful. But sometime later, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out his window and saw Isaac caressing Rebekah. Immediately, Abimelech called for Isaac and exclaimed, She is obviously your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Because I was afraid someone would kill me to get her from me. Isaac replied, How could you do this to us? Abimelech explained, exclaimed. One of my people might easily have taken your wife and slept with her, and you would have made us guilty of great sin. Then Abimelech issued a public proclamation. Anyone who touches this man or his wife will be put to death. When Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted, for the Lord blessed him. He became a very rich man, and his wealth continued to grow. He acquired so many flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle and servants, that the Philistines became jealous of him. So the Philistines filled up all of Isaac's wells with dirt. These were the wells that had been dug by the servants of his father, Abraham. Finally, Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country. Go somewhere else, he said, for you have become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away to the Gerar Valley, where he set up their tents and settled down. He reopened the wells his father had dug, which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death, Isaac also restored the names Abraham had given them. Isaac's servants also dug in the Gerar Valley and discovered a well of fresh water. But then, then the shepherds from Gerar came and claimed the spring. This is our water, they said, and they argued over it with Isaac's herdsmen. So Isaac named the well Essek, which means argument. Isaac's men then dug another well, but again there was a dispute over it. So Isaac named it Sitna, which means hostility. Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and dug another well. This time there was no dispute over it, so Isaac named the place Rehoboth, which means open space, for he said, at last the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in this land. From there Isaac moved to Beersheba, where the Lord appeared to him on the night of his arrival. I am the God of your father Abraham, he said. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and will bless you. I will multiply your descendants and they will become a great nation. I will do this because of my promise to Abraham, my servant. Then Isaac built an altar there and worshiped the Lord. He set up his camp at that place and his servants dug another well. One day, King Abimelech 
came from Gerar with his advisor, Ahuzah, and also Philco, his army commander. Why have you come here, Isaac asked. You obviously hate me since you kicked me off your land. They replied, we can plainly see that the Lord is with you, so we want to enter into a sworn treaty with you. Let's make a covenant. Swear that you will not harm us just as we have never troubled you. We have always treated you well, and we sent you away from us in peace. And now look how the Lord has blessed you. So Isaac prepared a covenant feast to celebrate the treaty, and they ate and drank together. Early the next morning, they each took a solemn oath not to interfere with each other. Then Isaac sent them home again, and they left him in peace. That very day, Isaac's servants came and told him about a new well they had dug. We've found water, they exclaimed. So Isaac named the well Sheba, which means oath. And to this day, the town that grew up there is called Beersheba, which means well of the oath. At the age of 40, Esau married two Hittite wives, Judith, the daughter of Beeri, and Basmath, the daughter of Elon. But Esau's wives made his life miserable, made life miserable for Isaac and Rebekah. One day when Isaac was old and turning blind, he called for Esau, his older son, and said, My son, Yes, father, Esau replied. I am an old man now, Isaac said, and I don't know when I may die. Take your bow and a quiver full of arrows and go out into the open country and hunt some wild game for me. Prepare my favorite dish and bring it here for me to eat. Then I will pronounce the blessing that belongs to you, my firstborn son, before I die. But Rebekah overheard what Isaac had said to his son Esau. So when Esau left to hunt for the wild game, she said to her son Jacob, Listen, I heard your father say to Esau, Bring me some wild game and prepare me a delicious meal. Then I will bless you in the Lord's presence before I die. Now, my son, listen to me and do exactly as I tell you. Go out to the flocks and bring me two fine young goats. I'll use them to prepare your father's favorite dish. Then take the food to your father so he can eat it and bless you before he dies. But look, Jacob replied to Rebekah, my brother Esau is a hairy man and my skin is smooth. What if my father touches me? He'll see that I'm trying to trick him, and then he'll curse me instead of blessing me. But his mother replied, Then let the curse fall on me, my son. Just do what I tell you. Go out and get the goats for me. So Jacob went out and got the young goats for his mother, Rebekah, took them and prepared a delicious meal, just the way Isaac liked it. Then she took Esau's favorite clothes, which were there in the house, and gave them to her younger son, Jacob. She covered his arms with the smooth part and the smooth part of his neck with the skin of the young goats. Then she gave Jacob the delicious meal, including fresh, freshly baked bread. So Jacob took the food to his father. My father, he said, Yes, my son, Isaac answered. Who are you, Esau or Jacob? Jacob replied, It's Esau, your firstborn son. I've done as you told me. Here is the wild game. Now sit up and eat it so you can give me your blessing. Isaac asked, How did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord your God put it in my path, Jacob replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come closer so I can touch you and make sure that you are really Esau. So Jacob went closer to his father 
and Isaac touched him. The voice is Jacob's, but the hands are Esau's, Isaac said. But he did not recognize Jacob because Jacob's hands felt hairy, just like Esau's. So Isaac prepared to bless Jacob. But are you really my son Esau, he asked. Yes, I am, Jacob replied. Then, Esau, then Isaac said, Now, my son, bring me the wild game. Let me eat it, and then I will give you my blessing. So Jacob took the food to his father, and Isaac ate it. He also drank the wine that Jacob served him. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Please come a little closer and kiss me, my son. So Jacob went over and kissed him. And when Isaac caught smell of his clothes, he was finally convinced, and he blessed his son. He said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of the outdoors, which the Lord has blessed. From the dew of heaven and the richness of the earth, may God always give you abundant harvests of grain and bountiful new wine. May many nations become your servants, May they bow down to you. May you be the master over your brothers, and may your mother's sons bow down to you. All who curse you will be cursed, and all who bless you will be blessed. As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and almost before Jacob had left his father, Esau returned from his hunt. Esau prepared a delicious meal and brought it to his father. And then he said, Sit up, my father, and eat my wild game, so you can give me your blessing. But Isaac asked you, I asked him, Who are you? Esau replied, It's your son, your firstborn son, Esau. Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably and said, Then who just served me wild game? I have already eaten it and I blessed him just before you came. And yes, that blessing must stand. Esau heard his father's words. He let out a loud and bitter cry. Oh, my father, what about me? Bless me too, he begged. But Isaac said, your brother was here and he tricked me. He has taken away your blessing. Esau exclaimed, No wonder his name is Jacob, for now he has cheated me twice. First he took my rights as the firstborn, and now he has stolen my blessing. Oh, haven't you saved even one blessing for me? Isaac said to Esau, I have made Jacob your master, and have declared that all his brothers will be his servants. I have guaranteed him an abundance of grain and wine, which is left, what is left for me to give you, my son? Esau pleaded, but do you have only one blessing? Oh, my father, bless me too. And Esau broke down and wept. Finally, his father Isaac said to him, you will live away from the richness of the earth and away from the dew of the heaven above. You will live by your sword, and you will serve your brother. But when you decide to break free, you will shake his yoke from your neck. From that time on, Esau hated Jacob because their father had given Jacob the blessing. And Esau began to scheme. I will soon be mourning my father's death then I will kill my brother, Jacob. But Rebekah heard about Esau's plans, so she sent for Jacob and told him, Listen, Esau is consoling himself by plotting to kill you. So listen carefully, my son. Get ready and flee to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay there with him until your brother cools off. When he calms down and forgets what you have done to him, I will send for you to come back. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I'm sick and tired of these local Hittite women. 
I would rather die than see Jacob marry one of them. Genesis chapter 28. So Isaac called for Jacob, blessed him, and said, You must not marry any of, any of these Canaanite women. Instead, go in at once to Paddan Aram to the house of your grandfather Bethuel and marry one of your uncle Laban's daughters. May God Almighty bless you and give you many children and may your descendants multiply and become many nations. May God pass on to you and the descendants the blessings he promised to Abraham. May you own this land where you are now living as a forgiver for God. Gave this land to Abraham. So Isaac and Jacob, away he went to Paddan Aram to stay with his uncle Liban, his mother's brother, the son of Bethuel, the era mean. Eskal knew that his father Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him to Paddan Aram to find a wife and that he had warned Jacob he must not marry a Canaanite woman. He also knew that Jacob had obeyed his parents and gone to Paddan Aram. It was now very clear to Esau that his father did not like the local candidate woman married one of Ishmael's daughters in Adetan. To the wife, he already had his new wife's name was Melahath. She was the sister of Nebaoth and the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son. Meanwhile, Jacob left Bershahab and traveled toward Herban at shutdown. He arrived at a good place to set up camp and stopped there for the night. Jacob found a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep. As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven, and he saw the angels of God Going up and down the stairway, at the top of the stairway stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather, Abraham, and the God for your father, Isaac, the groan you are lying on belongs to you. I am giving it to you and your destinies. Your destinies will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions to the west and the east, to the north and to the south, and, the, and all the families on the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants.
what more I am with you and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in his place. I wasn't even aware of it. But he was also afraid and said, What an awesome place this is. It is no known other than the house of God, the very getaway to heaven. The next morning, Jacob got up very early. He took the stone he had rested his head against and he set it upright as a memorial pillar. Then he peered olive all over it. He named that place Bethuel, which means house of God. Atha who it was previously called Luz. When Jacob made this vow of God will indeed be with me and protect me on this journey and if he will provide me with food and clothing and if I return safely to my father's home then the Lord will currently be my God and this Marolo parlor I have set up will become a place where worshiping God and I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives me.